Hey everyone, in this video we're going to walk through some of the features of my lab IT simulation training. So we're going to use it for the Windows 10 simulations, you know, we're going to actually use it to learn a little bit about some of the features of Windows 10. But we also will see it a little bit when it comes to the Microsoft Office app, so it's going to be pretty useful throughout the entirety of the course, which is why I want to make sure that everyone knows all the features that you can use with it. So what you'll see right here is a simulated computer screen. So in this case, this is the first question of the feature training. Uh, this is the simulated Windows login screen right here. It's actually, I'll be honest, this is super clever the way that they set this up. I'm incredibly impressed with the people at Pearson. I, I have plenty of complaints about Pearson's technology and all that, but this this is pretty, you know, this is something else. Regardless, um, this is an example of a question on the simulation training. What you'll see is the instructions on the side right here. So in this case, it's sign into Windows using the Microsoft account for my IT lab user. Enter this as the password. So it will give you a set of instructions on things that you have to do. Now, if you want, what you can do is you can come down here to this Learning Aids tab. There's two options, Watch Video and Practice. Watching the video will actually show you step by step everything that you need to do in order to pass this part of the simulation training. And I highly recommend that for, for everything in the simulation training, you watch the video first. There's a lot of stuff that I actually wasn't able to record myself just because, well, I've done some terrible things to my Windows installation. And because of that, I don't actually have a lot of features that you might see on the simulation training on any of my computers. So I don't even have Cortana anymore because of the terrible things that I did to my Windows installation. So because of that, I can't show you any of the questions that involve Cortana, which is why you got to watch the uh, watch the video associated with you know all of these questions. I also don't know how to record logging into my own uh, in, into my own Windows account while needing to be logged into my Windows account in order to actually record videos without setting up a whole bunch of crazy technology that I just plain don't have access to. So watching the videos is going to be really helpful here. So that's what we can do. We can watch the video. The video will load. If you want to access closed captioning, you can click this button here and switch it to English. Uh, English appears to be the only language that they have captioning for. Uh, you can check out the settings if you want to change the quality. If your internet isn't great, you can decrease the quality to 480, 360, or 240p. You can show where the captions show up. You can show the transcripts as well as the captions. And you can also turn on repeating, which is when the video reaches the end, it starts back up immediately. Uh, volume controls are right here as well, and you can control the speed of playback. To play the video, you would press this button here. Uh, I don't believe the sound will come through on my video of this video, but what you'll see is uh, you'll actually see the person going through the actions of everything on here. So you'll see them type in a password, like so, and then they'll press enter and it does the simulated Windows login. It is really hard to talk while the voice of this video is going in my ear. But yes, that's the first thing you can do, is you can uh, play the video and you can click that X button that I actually just clicked in order to get out of the video and come back here. Now, important to note is that the video will show you the entirety of this question all at once. It will show you every single step. And some of these questions actually are multiple steps. Uh, if you want to see things one step at a time, you can look at the practice side of things. And what the practice will do is it will, I'm going to pause this because it starts speaking audio into my ear again and mute it. Uh, the practice will actually give you a hint for the current step that you're on. So in this case, it will say, you know, with the insertion point in here, type my lab, IT, my IT lab one, two, three, four, and press enter. 
Now, if I do that right now, my IT lab, one, two, three, four, press enter. It will give this practice complete. Now try it yourself. And it will take me back to the actual question where I can then repeat what I just did. My IT lab, one, two, three, four. And that's the task complete. When you complete the question, it will move you on to the next one. Now this one actually has multiple steps. So the first thing it says, display the home page of the settings window. Well, I don't necessarily know how to do that. So let me watch the video first. Uh, I'm just going to crank it up real quick. And it gives you all this information about how to do each one of the steps. Then what I can do is I can come here and I can say, wait, hang on. I, I, I'm still having trouble. I'm going to go to practice. I'm going to mute this again. On the taskbar in the notifications area, click the action center icon. OK, well, I can click this icon that they're directing me towards. This is the action center. Then. I can click this part that they're directing me towards, all settings, and now I'm at this settings page right here. And that is just for the first step, just for the step of displaying the home page of the settings window. So I can do that, I can do that, just as I learned in the practice. And now you have the next step, change the desktop background here. I can then go look at the practice, And it has all the instructions on what to do for the next step. So I click personalization, browse, butterfly, choose picture, and so on. Just as I'm being directed by the practice. And then it reverts all of those things that I did. It takes me back here. And then I can practice doing this for myself. For myself. Now, all of those are completely optional. If you already know how to do this, you don't need to actually watch the video. You don't actually need to look at the practice. So. That is um, how you can actually learn how to do some of these skills right here. And if you take an incorrect action, like what I just did, I tried to close this window, you get this incorrect action notification right here, and you'll see that the attempts remaining decreases by one. This is why you actually want to look at the video and the learning aids ahead of time so that you don't lose all of your attempts for this one question. So now I'm going to click personalization, browse, butterfly.jpg and choose the picture like so. I'm going to finish this out real quick. Um, change the lock screen image to Bahamas. Browse. Bahamas. Choose picture. Ah, well, it seems I have timed out. One sec. All right, sorry about that. Um, it appears that uh, Pearson decided to sign me out in the middle of recording my lecture material. Now, I would re-record all that, but, well, I spent a lot of time recording all that material, and frankly, I don't want to have to say all of that stuff all over again. So we're just going to keep on going from here. Now, me losing all of that progress is kind of a bummer. In fact, I actually uh, lost the progress on... My first question as well. This is why it's really important for you to save. Uh, are you sure you want to save this assignment for later? You can restart and complete the assignment at any time. If you hit OK, then it will exit out of that assignment. Uh, and it will actually save your progress within the original question as well. Because um, you know if you're at step like 2 out of 5 or something like that, and you need to exit from your computer real quick, you can hit save and it will remember it will remember that progress. So that's really important. Now, if you want to scroll between all of the questions, maybe uh, jump ahead a little bit or jump backwards, redo a question or anything like that, there is this view all questions button right here that you can click. It brings up this view. It also gives you the status of all of these questions, so incomplete, not attempted, or complete. And then if you want to jump to one of the questions, you can click launch and it will bring you to that question. When you're done, you'll want to click submit to show me that you've completed your assignment. Anything else? Uh, accessibility options are down here. You can launch an on-screen keyboard 
if you are, say, on a tablet for whatever reason, or you're having trouble hitting your own keys, and a uh, you know pressing the keyboard is required, you can hit this on-screen keyboard. This gives you an idea of your network status. So if you have a good connection to Pearson's servers, and then finally, uh, this gives you some help if you need any help whatsoever. Also, you can use these arrows to move back and forth between the questions. So that should be everything you need. Uh, thank you all so much for watching.